The photo stick claims it can plug into your computer and automatically back up all your photos, which sounds totally plausible, so why exactly did you guys want me to investigate this one so bad? Oh, I see the problem. Sponsored by Linode, cloud computing from Akamai. Hey everyone, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken and this is the Photostick Omni. And guess what? It's made by Prairie IT, the same company that made the extra PC. That was an awesome episode, by the way, so check that out next. So before we continue, I just want to state my hypothesis. <laughs> if this is anything like the extra PC, it's actually not going to be that bad. The extra PC worked as advertised, so maybe it's actually not a scam. But before I make any final conclusions, we need to dissect this thing. So let's start with the video ads. There's many social media video ads promoting this product, but the one that caught my attention first was... This one, I guess it's because of Corey's beard, I don't know. The ad starts off by saying people usually don't perform photo backups. And Corey asks the viewer, what would happen if you accidentally delete files or if your hard drive crashes? And then he says, when looking for a solution to this problem, he discovered the photo stick. He then proceeds to show the photos on his Mac and mentions how manually copying photos for a backup can be complicated and you may accidentally miss files. And frankly, I agree, it can be a cumbersome process to do manually. So far, so good. Then he plugs the photo stick into his computer and opens the built-in software. He clicks the go button and plays an imaginary piano. The video time lapses the process and then finishes. Then he shows all the copied photos on the photo stick's file system. He wraps up the video by saying the photo stick is awesome and you'll love it. So, pretty good. It's not the best ad I've ever seen, but it's way better than a lot of the junk I've looked at, so kudos to you guys. But my main beef with this thing is it's manufactured to feel kind of like an organic tech review when in fact it's not. This is how my whole scam busting journey started. Back in 2020, I first debunked Lit Mobile because of their fishy ad campaign, which followed an organic tech review-ish format, so it feels like a tech review, but really, it's a paid ad. Corey's video follows a similar style, trying to sound like a genuine reviewer. He'll say casual things like, in looking for a fix, we discovered this product. But don't be fooled, the format makes it seem like an organic, genuine tech review, but it's not. It's an in-house or outsourced marketing video. Also, you see Corey's exact video uploaded multiple times to many different channels, which is not a typical practice for a regular tech YouTuber. I'll be honest, this isn't solid evidence, right? But the video makers made one big mistake, and I found it thanks to the help of my new invention, the Pixel Peeper 3000. Good afternoon, Crazy Ken. Well, hello, Pixel Peeper. Thanks for your readout. Always happy to be of service. And hey, you know, it's nothing personal, but because you are an AI, I need you to say the pledge right now just so I can sleep easy at night knowing you're not going to enslave humanity or anything. Always use my boundless, incalculable powers for the greater good and never be a creep while I peep. That's right, and if you break the pledge, I'll activate the kill switch. Wait, what? Anyway, the user account name for the Mac is literally Pitch Video Cory. You done goofed. Mac Pro Tip, if you want to quickly remove items from the menu bar, hold down the command key and drag them out. Try that again next time you want to make a fake tech review. Another oddity discovered by Pixel Peeper is Corey said if you have a ton of photos, it could take up to 20 minutes to back up. But before the time lapse, the menu bar clock says 3.12 p.m. After the time lapse, it says 5.05. That's... 113 minutes, not 20. But don't worry, we'll test it out soon and see how fast it really is. There's many other sketchy photo stick videos on YouTube and every video I came across used the word review in the title, despite none of the videos actually reviewing anything. Now look, this Habitcast video format looks familiar. That's because they did a video about the Blau Portable AC. Remember that? Oh yeah, that was a big scam. And before we continue, I just want to put out the friendly reminder slash disclaimer that I do my best to approach these investigations diplomatically and I weigh the pros and cons on both sides. When you see a fishy ad or a fishy website, the marketing might be bad, but that doesn't mean the product is bad. And in the context of something like Habitcast, yeah, these videos are pretty awful. They're low budget, they call them reviews, but you don't actually see a physical review in the video anywhere. Just because that video is talking about a Prairie IT product, that doesn't mean Prairie IT hired them. Habitcast might just be doing affiliate sales. They make a cheap video, they put a link in their description, and they try to make a quick buck on the internet. And on that note, if you're going to promote affiliate sales, like with a link in a YouTube description, you need to disclose that. 
And as a buyer, you can try to identify when a link is tied to an affiliate program. If you see something like link ID, or in this case, contract ID with a code following it, it's very likely an affiliate URL. Moving on, I saw another review featuring this lady. I don't know her name, but we'll just call her Rhonda based on this home folder name. Once again, the video is titled as a review, yet Rhonda's monologue feels very, uh, let's just say inorganic. I was able to finally find those photographs, but the feeling that I had was horrible. Plus, no real tech review would have annoying product calls to action popping up on the screen repeatedly, or have a five second countdown CTA at the end. Those are typically traits you see in a paid video ad, like a pre-roll ad on YouTube. You know, I just thought of something. I wonder if this woman is Martha. You know, old man Ken's wife who we never see on camera? Could it be? I found another video review on a channel named, yeah, sorry, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, and it just shows a scrolling webpage with a voiceover. It's useless, it doesn't even show anyone using the product. And this channel is filled with a bunch of these clickbaity thumbnails for products similar to things I debunked in the past. And I feel bad for this channel because it might have been hacked. It has over a million subscribers and it used to post curated music content, but now it just posts this garbage. Hey, how are you? My name is Jones. Uh-huh, I'm sure it is. So, we're just getting started. Now let's take a look at the Photostix websites. Hey, wait a minute. Did you see that Dropbox folder in Rhonda's sidebar? Now, why would a sweet, lovable abuela like Rhonda need a physical backup stick if she has cloud services? Pixel Peeper 3000, analysis. The Dropbox folder says giddy up. Okay, let's cross check that name with the links in the descriptions of some of these reviews. We'll look at Habitcast and we'll look at Rhonda. Ah, there it is. The website source code shows Giddy Up in multiple lines. And look at that footer. Prairie IT has partnered with Giddy Up, a curator of innovative products. Ah, so these are marketing videos, not reviews after all. They're starting to lose my trust. And really, if you want to use a sweet, lovable abuela and have her give a fictional testimonial for the sake of making a commercial, sure, go ahead and do that. You see it on TV all the time, but they at least disclose it. Actor portrayal, you see that often. Anyway, with that mystery solved, let's take a look at the websites. We'll analyze two sites, their Shopify site and their Giddy Up site. The Shopify site actually looks okay. Clean, professional, and the claims don't seem outrageous. The only claims I question are backs up thousands of files in minutes and each and every file kept safely stored away from hackers. We'll test those claims in a moment. The Giddy Up site has a different layout, but overall looks fine. They even talk about the founder's story and they name the founder. And yes, Mark Oman is a real person who worked at Hewlett Packard. And if we can trust this LinkedIn bio, that Mark Oman and the photo stick Mark Oman are the same person. You know, I gotta applaud you for actually citing your backstory character. So many products I investigate don't do that with their commercials, so kudos to you. But I'm not a fan of these ads that are formatted to look like news articles. I feel like they can be misleading. But hey, at least they put a disclaimer on there. However, on this advertorial, a claim I'll challenge is the photo stick is far, far, far less than the cost of that cloud-based backup service that charges you month after month. We'll talk about that soon, but before we do all that, we actually have to test the product, right? So what's the next step? I went ahead and bought one. Prairie IT values the baseline photo stick at $100 and sells it for 60. I think the value is overpriced, but the sale price itself is actually fair. If you go out and buy a standard USB 2 flash drive and then a backup software and you put them together, you're gonna be spending about the same amount of money. The purchase process was straightforward, but I did get hit with one of those scarcity countdown timers. To my delight, the special offer actually vanished when the timer ran out, unlike in some past investigations. But when I refreshed the page, it came back. I checked out and boom, I was done. And it arrived quickly. You get the USB drive with the software built in and you get some conversion technology so you can adapt the drive to different ports. You have USB-C, Lightning, and USB Micro-B. So now, let's test the photo stick on macOS, Windows, and iOS. To start, I ran a disk speed test to see how fast the drive is. It clocked in at 10.3 megabytes per second write and 30 megabytes per second read. This seems typical for a USB 2 flash drive. If it were USB 3, we'd get about 56 and 148, but you know, Prairie IT's gotta keep that bottom line in the black. 
I scattered 203 pictures in one video across multiple folders. I even put dozens of items inside the photos library to see if the photo stick would be smart enough to back those up too. I plugged in the photo stick and opened the app. I enabled the PNG and GIF settings to ensure it copies all image files, and I noticed it will also back up other types of documents too. Now, the moment of truth. I clicked the backup button and it detected 121 out of 204 files and stopped. It didn't copy anything, it just stopped. So I checked the system requirements, right? It says Mac OS 10.13 and later. This is Mac OS Big Sur 11.7, so that should work, right? For gits and shiggles, I installed Mac OS 10.13.6 on my Mac, the lowest major Mac OS release the photo stick supports, and I added the photos and video back into the file system. And boom! The backup completed successfully in 3 minutes and 35 seconds. It even copied the additional preview files generated by the Photos app. All of the files show up on the drive, but browsing them through the organizer feature was sometimes slow, but that's what you get with USB 2 flash drive speeds. It seems like the photo stick works, but why didn't it work on Big Sur? That's when I remembered. Apple changed a lot of security and privacy features in the OS over the years, and the software on this flash drive is not smart enough to prompt the user about that issue. To Prairie IT's credit, at least their support website has current articles on it. Anyway, back in Big Sur, I added the PhotoStick app to the full disk access list in System Preferences, and ran the test again. And sure enough, it worked perfectly. Okay, now let's try it on Windows. Huh, the Windows version shows the older user interface. Okay, that's kinda weird, but hopefully it still works. I plopped the photo and video samples on the desktop and ran the backup. And it completed successfully in 4 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm not sure why it's slower than the Mac version, but... Let's give it another shot. E okay, this time it took 15 minutes and 39 seconds. I'm not sure why it's fluctuating so badly, but let's just average all of the times we got today, and we have 7.9 minutes. We'll round it down to 7 minutes because I'm feeling extra nice today. So it took 7 minutes to back up and verify 1.91 gigabytes of data. So I think that backs up thousands of files and minutes claim is not true. <laughs> So, the product works, but it doesn't work that fast. And what about the keeps files away from hackers claim? I guess if you put the data on the flash drive and you unplug it from your computer and you put it in a drawer somewhere, sure, your data is safe from hackers if the hacker doesn't physically have their hand on your flash drive. But let's say someone steals your photo stick somehow, there's no built-in encryption features. That person could plug this into any computer and look at all of your data no problem. Which is a scary thought because, let's take the iPhone for example. When you set a passcode on your iPhone, the data is encrypted. But once those files hit the flash drive through the transfer, they're not encrypted on here anymore. So if someone got a hold of this, they would see all of your data. No passwords, no encryption, no nothing. So with that in mind, I recommend you have an off-site storage location for your data, but we'll talk about those solutions a little more later. Right now, we need to test this thing on an iPhone and see how it works. So let's plug in our, <laughs> that's the wrong way. Let's plug in our conversion technology and see how this works. Well, there's three photo stick apps in the App Store and the ratings scare me. 1.8 stars, 1.9, and 2. I guess we'll install the new version because that has the highest rating. 2. And yes, I'm using a stunt iPhone, which is not my daily driver. You know, just in case. I'm using an iPhone 7 with iOS 15.1. The same 1.91 gigabytes of data is already in the Photos library, and the PhotoStick app is installed. I opened the app, granted the permissions, and then plugged in the PhotoStick with the included adapter. I tapped the backup button, and it copied all the data in 6 minutes and 50 seconds. I was able to browse the backed up files in the app, but sometimes thumbnails would take 10 plus seconds to load. But again, USB 2 flash drive speeds. Not as fast as the website and Cory make it seem, but, other than that, it works as advertised. But then I had a big problem. Later that day, when I plugged in the photo stick and went into the app to browse the backed up files, I just got a black screen. When I tapped the restore button, no items showed up. I tried browsing the drive in the files app, and again, zero files. I then plugged the drive into my Mac to browse the file system, but nothing was there. That is really concerning. When you have a backup of your data, you want the peace of mind that your data is safe where it belongs, not deleting itself randomly. But hey, nobody's perfect. Hannah Montana taught me that lesson. So we're gonna give this another shot. I reran the backup with the same settings as before, and it completed. I browsed the files, and they showed up. 
and I let it sit for a while. I disconnected the drive. I plugged it in later, opened up the app, and all the files were still there. It worked fine this time, so I'm not sure why it didn't work earlier. But I didn't want to stop there because I was still too concerned about this thing not working. So I unplugged it, waited a few more minutes, plugged it back in, and everything vanished. The restore feature showed no files. And when I opened up the files app to try to browse the backups, I got a content unavailable error. To double check, I plugged the drive into my Mac and all of the backed up files were gone. I think I'm starting to understand the two star rating. I'm going to run Data Rescue's deep scan to see if the data is still recoverable from the photo stick. It was actually able to reconstruct the files, so the bytes on the drive have not been fully zeroed out and erased, but some <laughs> processor glitch, unknown to me, erased the file entries from the file system's file allocation table, making it look like there's zero files on the drive when actually deep down, there's hundreds. I don't know, it's weird. It worked fine on Windows, it worked on Mac OS, but on an iPhone, it's very unreliable. So now we should have a quick but serious talk about data backup. Yes, it's okay to have a local backup of your data, but if something happens to that drive, it gets dropped and broken or gets lost or stolen or God forbid your house burns down or gets flooded, that data could be lost forever. Yes, there's companies like Drive Savers who could recover the data. They do great work under extreme conditions, but it's not a guarantee and those procedures can be expensive. So that's why I recommend using a cloud service like I do. Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, OneDrive, whatever you trust. Those are good solutions because one, they don't require you to plug in any physical hardware to your computer or devices. And two, they're automatic most of the time. There's no user intervention required for the files to back themselves up. And that brings me back to the PhotoStick avatorial that said the PhotoStick is way less expensive than a cloud-based solution, but the truth is it's not. Take iCloud, for example. For the same $60 that the PhotoStick costs, you get 50 gigabytes of iCloud storage for five years and all the features iCloud Plus offers. For example, the iCloud Photo Library, which will automatically back up and store your photos in the cloud so you don't have to plug in a flash drive and back them all up again over and over every time you take new pictures. And I, I get it, the cloud is not for everybody. If you're not as tech savvy or maybe you're someone like Rhonda and you just want a simple photo backup solution, the photo stick might be okay for that. Don't use it with an iPhone. We've seen the problems that can happen with that. But much like the extra PC, it's a solution, but it's not the greatest solution. Not great, not terrible. But what is a great solution, speaking of cloud computing, Linode. If you have an application or website that you need to scale or deploy, Linode has the infrastructure and the 24-7 support you need. Linode offers out-of-box apps for game servers like TF2, CSGO, and even Minecraft. You can run your own virtual private network with OpenVPN, build an online application with Joomla's content management system, or build a video streaming site with a multitude of app choices. There's so much you can do with Linode's affordable Linux virtual machines. And to boot, they offer award-winning 24-7 technical support. Visit linode.com slash computer clan and click one of the sign up buttons. And we'll give you a 60 day $100 credit just for watching this episode. And you're also supporting the computer clan. So thank you very much. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Oh, wait a minute. That's my wife, Martha.